can royal jelly make you more fertile? I recently did a beekeeping class where I learned all about the organization of the hive and making honey. And we talked about royal jelly and how it makes the queen bee so fertile. And I remember that my patients have asked me this a lot. Does royal jelly make you more fertile? And that is what we're gonna talk about in this video. Royal jelly is made by all of the worker bees to feed the queen bee to help her be more fertile and lay all of those eggs. So it's not too far of a stretch for humans to wonder if they also take this royal jelly, this fertility supplement, if it'll help them be more fertile. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist who loves teaching patients and you. You can find lots of resources on my website, drlaurashaheen.com. You can find links to Instagram, TikTok, my weekly podcast, Baby or Bust Fertility Podcast. And be sure and sign up for my newsletter because you can stay up to date every week. But in this video, we're going to go over a specific supplement that a lot of my patients ask me about. Today, we're going to review five main things. Number one, exactly what royal jelly is. Number two, theoretically how it may help human fertility. Number three, we're going to go over the research and exactly what it shows. Number four, we're going to go over some serious warnings before you take royal jelly that you've got to realize. Number five, I'm going to give you my personal opinion and what I tell my patients when they ask me about royal jelly improving their fertility. So I recently took this incredibly informative beekeeping class. Uh, I donned the beekeeping uniform. I got to hold the bees in the hive and see the honey. And I learned so much. Here are five fascinating facts about bees. Number one, bees have been on this planet for at least 30 million years. Number two, a single bee can produce one tablespoon of honey in its entire lifetime. Number three, the majority of the bees in the hive are worker bees and they cannot lay eggs. Only one queen bee can lay eggs. Number four, that queen bee lays up to 2,000 eggs in a day and over 800,000 eggs in her lifetime. Number five, the bee's diet is rich in pollen and honey that they make in the hive, but the queen bee eats something very special called royal jelly. The royal jelly is very special. It contains a lot more nutrients than what other bees eat. And this is one of the reasons that the queen bee is able to be so fertile. All right. Topic number one, what is royal jelly? Royal jelly is a milk-like substance. It's made from pollen and a little bit of honey, and it's used to feed very small bees, little larvae, but mainly it feeds the queen bee and helps her stay really fertile. It's also called apilac or queen bee's jelly. It's made of proteins, fats, and lots of amino acids. Topic number two, why do we think royal jelly could make humans more fertile? Well, royal jelly is full of powerful antioxidants, some anti-inflammatory agents, and a lot of antibiotic activity. And the feeling is, is if this nutritious, incredible substance with all these proteins, all these amino acids can keep a queen bee making 2000 eggs a day, humans are thinking maybe it could make me more fertile. Royal jelly has been used by humans as a supplement for many, many years. Some people use it for diabetes, high cholesterol, premenstrual symptoms, menopausal symptoms, and a lot more. But Topic number three, what does the evidence show? Royal jelly has been used in clinical trials of doses of 1,000 milligrams to up to 3,000 milligrams a day to treat lots of different conditions. For example, there's a study by Sharif et al. in which women were given royal jelly to decrease symptoms from menopause. Women who took royal jelly at a dose of 1,000 milligrams a day for eight weeks reported a decrease in their menopausal symptoms. Another study from 2007 out of Japan described royal jelly acting like a phytoestrogen in the human body and suggested that it could be used to support healthy uterine muscles and uterine lining. Since then, there have been several studies looking at using royal jelly in animal models, like rats and lambs and cows, but very few. I couldn't find any studies specific to humans. If you're curious about an excellent review of all the animal studies looking at royal jelly for fertility, there's a wonderful review published by Abdul Noor et al. in 2020 in the journal Animal Physiology and Animal Nutrition. Two examples of trials that were in that review article showed that royal jelly given to rabbits improved sperm parameters, and another study looked at giving royal jelly to 
lambs and saw increased pregnancy rates and fertility. So there are studies out there looking at animals, but I really couldn't find any studies specifically looking at the impact of fertility in humans with supplementing with royal jelly. So although royal jelly is full of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory agents and just packed with powerful proteins and amino acids, we just don't have evidence showing that it improves human fertility. Topic number four, warning. There are some serious things you need to think about before starting to take royal jelly. You should definitely talk to your doctor first. Two main reasons. Number one, people have reported significant allergic reactions, including anaphylaxis, if they've taken royal jelly. So especially if you're allergic to bee stings, do not take royal jelly. Other side effects people have reported are rash, bloody diarrhea, nausea, and upset stomach. The second reason you should talk to your doctor before you start taking royal jelly is medicine interactions. There have been reports of some medications being inhibited and not working as well if someone's taking royal jelly at the same time. These include chemotherapeutic drugs, Coumadin and other blood thinning medications, and estrogen and DHEA. So this is really important, especially for my fertility patients that are taking estrogen to build up their uterine lining for an embryo transfer, or in my patients that are taking Lovenox or blood thinning medications. You really should talk to your doctor before you take any supplement because there can be interactions just like this. All right, topic number five, what do I tell my patients? Honestly, if my patients ask me if they should take royal jelly or not, I say pass. I understand the theoretical benefits. I love the idea of getting more antioxidants and more anti-inflammation, but with all of these interactions and the risk of anaphylaxis in certain patients, and plus so many supplements are not well regulated by the FDA. I just think that there are other things that you could be taking, like a good prenatal vitamin, vitamin D, maybe coenzyme Q10, but royal jelly, I just don't see the benefit. There are no human studies that say it helps fertility, and there are some significant medication interactions that you need to be aware of. I hope you learned something from this video. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, or any other topics you'd like to see me cover, and make sure and subscribe to this channel so you get my weekly video all about reproductive health. And as always, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples.